Hi, I'm Joan Cartan Hansen, and welcome to Science Trek, the web show. And joining me now to answer your questions about salmon are Jeff Hundell and Adair Evans from the Idaho Department of Fish and Game. Thank you both for being here. Sure. Thank you. All right, let's go to your questions. Hi, I'm Maddie, and I go to Waihee Harbor Elementary. And my question is, do fish have nostrils like people? Oh, what a great question. <laughs> Fish actually have um, what we call nares, and they look like noses. They have two little head, you know, holes right on the top of their head, but they're actually a, a sac. So when they, when water passes into that hole, it doesn't go anywhere. And in the bottom of that little hole, which we call a nair, they have sensors that help them to smell. So water will come into that area, it touches those little pockets, the nerves sense the smells, and that's how they actually smell, but they don't use those holes for breathing. Hi, my name is Shannon. I go to Hawaii Harbor Elementary School. And my question is, how do you tell the difference between a male salmon and a female salmon? There are actually seven species of Pacific salmon. We have five in, in the western U.S. Chinook salmon, chum salmon, coho salmon, pink salmon, and sockeye salmon. And in Idaho, we actually have two of those forms, Chinook salmon and sockeye salmon. We also have a third form, a, a, a sister or brother, if you will, a steelhead, is actually a trout that goes to the ocean and back. Many people confuse it with a Pacific salmon. But, so seven total Pacific salmon species, five on the western, uh, in the western U.S., and Idaho has two of those species. My name is Kyla and I go to Dalton Elementary in Dalton Gardens, Idaho. My question is, how much eggs do salmon spawn? Kayla, in Idaho, most salmon, either Chinook or, or sockeye salmon, they'll lay, typically a female will lay between 3,000 and 6,000 eggs. It sounds like a large number, but relative to some other fish species, it's actually a fairly small number. If you look at uh, carp or some of the other uh, fish species in Idaho, they lay millions of eggs. So so uh, Chinook and sockeye in Idaho are only a few thousand, generally between 3,000 and 6,000. And generally, the larger a mommy fish is, the more eggs she'll produce. Kay Lynn asks, what is the smallest salmon? Well, when we talk about Idaho, the smallest salmon that we have here is the sockeye salmon. They start their lives in Redfish Lake, hang out for a couple of years, and then go to the ocean. But they don't stay there as long as some of the others. And they don't eat as much, and they don't just get as big. So by the time they come back to Idaho, they might only be about one to three pounds. Zach like to know, how does a salmon live in the ocean? Zach, how does a salmon live in the ocean? A, a salmon starts life in freshwater, and they live in freshwater for a period of one to three years generally. And before they, they head downstream and go into the salt water, into the, into the sea, their bodies have to undergo a, a physiological change. They undergo a, a process we call smultification, and that's a process where their internal organs are changing to get used to a different environment that they'll be living in. A marine or a saltwater environment is very different than a, than a freshwater environment. So many of the fish's organs have to be, behave very differently, their kidneys especially, and whether or not their bodies are taking in water or whether or not they're losing water to say a saltwater environment. And then after a salmon spends a period of time in the ocean, those fish are ready to head back to fresh water. They'll undergo the same physiological change, a body change. Their bodies will get used to living, or will change from living in a, in a salt water environment to living in a, in a fresh water environment, very differently uh, how salt water and fresh water acts on the bodies, on actually the cells inside a fish. Hi, my name is Gabe and I go and I go to Dalton Elementary in Dalton Gardens, Idaho, and my question is, how do salmon know where their home stream is? Salmon use their sense of smell. What they do is they, as they're going to the ocean, they actually don't swim. They kind of go backwards and they just sort of let the current sort of push them along. And all the way they're smelling the water. 
They're getting smells from nutrients in the water, the minerals in the water, and they're smelling all the way back. When they come back to Idaho, they actually use that sense of smell again. They sniff out the waters and they find their way back through the smells that they get in Idaho's waters. Every water smells different. I know that seems kind of strange to us. We don't even really smell water, but fish have a great sense of smell and they use that smell to find their way back home. Niles asks, how many pounds does a grown female salmon weigh? Niles, a grown female salmon will weigh between 10 and 20 pounds. Uh, the, the older a female salmon is, the larger she'll be generally. And, and of the salmon species in Idaho, Chinook salmon and sockeye salmon, Chinook mommies are going to be a bit bigger. And I've, I've personally seen Chinook females that are in excess of 20 pounds before they lay their eggs. They're very large fish. Hi, my name is Iris and I'm from St. Simeon Elementary and my question is, why are salmon pink? Why are salmon pink? Well, so, so salmon have certainly an exterior color and generally those will be pinks and reds and oranges. Uh, generally as these fish mature, as they get closer to laying their eggs, the, the mommies and the daddy fish, they'll undergo a coloration change. Generally it's most pronounced or it's most noticeable in the male fish, the males will turn bright colors to try and attract females to, to spawn. Now, fish also are, have a pinkish or a reddish color inside their bodies. The inside, the color of, of fish flesh or, or the muscle that we eat is going to be, uh, the color of that's going to be determined by the diet that they eat. If they eat a diet that's rich in insects, uh, or invertebrates, there's usually a lot of natural pigments which turn the, the meat uh, reddish or pinkish color. I'm sorry we've run out of time. Jeff Nadir, thank you for joining us. Thanks also to the folks here at the MK Nature Center for hosting us. If you want to learn more about salmon, you can go to the salmon area on the Science Trek website. You'll find facts, links, games, and our salmon broadcast show and lots more. And every week, check out my blog for the latest science news for kids, all at idahoptv.org. Thanks for joining us on Science Trek, the web show.